episode 91, take two. You guys sent in your suggestions and I'm going through them. Today we're going to do another one way to light. This time I kind of unexpectedly did a scene that kind of would have worked really well for the other lighting video that I did a couple of weeks back, which just goes to show the more that you try different techniques and the more that you do different things, the better you're going to be. So let's take a look at a minimalistic bedroom scene. Again, apologies, there's no audio in this clip. I didn't really think about recording audio. I'll try to remember that for the next one. An important first step for me in any scene is to assess the light sources that are already existing in the room. This is gonna help me create the most natural looking shot. You need to work out if those light sources are gonna be helpful to you or if you're going to have to replicate them using something else or supplement them using film lights. In this case, I was in a kind of fortunate position because our bedside lamps are actually really nice and they're dimmable and they've got beautiful lampshades on them which give these really interesting throw of shadows over the wall and I wanted to use that. I am I'm also, however, in the slightly unfortunate position of not having many lights to choose from in terms of film lights to help me replicate that sort of thing or even do large setups. I only have two lights. One of them's broken. So absolutely spoiled for choice, I ended up going with just the bedside lamps and seeing where that would lead. When possible, I like to discuss with the director whether we can start with a wide and then move our way in. It just saves time on setups. It helps you establish the lighting setup and then move everything inward to get the finer details. And that's exactly what we did here. We started with the wide or the master shot. It's not particularly wide, but it is the master shot. This is where we run through the whole action and we're seeing it through a mirror. I could have done this through the doorway as well to create a little bit of of a frame, a little bit of interest around the shot, but I thought the mirror might be a little bit more interesting and a little less straightforward. It ended up working quite well, but one thing I do regret not doing later on in the scene is actually establishing where that mirror is in the room by putting it in shot in the background of one of the other close-up shots. It would have been useful to do that, to establish where it is and where we have come from to where we are now, but I didn't do that. It still worked. Nothing to do with lighting though, so let's talk about the lighting. The lighting in the scene is really bare bones. I had the lamps on full brightness and on the left light, I actually used a t-shirt to kind of flag off any of the light that was falling on the wall on that right side of the mirror. I wanted to make sure that the focus was just on what was in the mirror. And I wanted that point in the frame to be the brightest thing. And this is where another theme of this idea came into play. And that was lighting the space rather than lighting your subject. I wanted to play with the idea of lighting the space around the subject to give shape to them. And in a way that is lighting them. So you notice that the wall behind is exposed correctly, but Dustin is not exposed correctly, but he's still Still there and he's still in frame and he's still technically lit. Moving inwards we were able to play with the intensity and play around with the direction a little bit. I needed a little bit more level out of the lamp but I did not want to take off that lampshade because it was throwing such a beautiful light and it would be very hard to replicate. So to avoid losing all of that shape but still get a little bit more level I decided to play with the light that was spilling out the top of the shade and put a piece of card in the back so it kind of scoops outwards and towards Dustin's face. Next I wanted more shape. The room is very pale, very white. There's a white wardrobe, there's white walls. So I wanted to cut any spill that was happening from our two light sources. Firstly, I removed the t-shirt from the lamp in the background, just so I could get that spill onto the wall. And I then brought in a large piece of black fabric on a C-stand, draped that over and put that as close as I could to Dustin's face without actually getting it in frame. It made those shadows a lot deeper and made it more dramatic. So the next shot we worked on was a really interesting one. I had this idea where I wanted to silhouette Dustin and have the light coming from behind him. So one side of his face was still lit, but the other side fell off into darkness, but I still wanted to maintain the eye light in the dark side of the face. It was gonna be a fine line to try and find that perfect balance. To start with, I made sure I set up the shot for a silhouette. So I made sure that neg fill was all the way in. So we definitely had no spill 
still coming in on that side of the face. We also shuffled in our lamp source a little bit closer just to get a bit more level out of it and change up the angle a little bit. Next step was to work on the eye light and that was the most difficult part of that shot. I started with a gold side reflector and I reflected back the lamp source into the dark side of the face to see where the eye light would sit. But I ended up actually inadvertently lighting up that dark side of the face and pretty much getting rid of all the work that the neg fill was doing. So I scrapped that idea very quickly and moved on to something which was a smaller point of light, which will get an eye light and also maintain that shadow. So I got my mobile phone flashlight and I put a little bit of CTO on top of it. You could also use a torch, I guess. And if you had a light that dimmed, that would be even better. Then it was just a matter of finding the position where it's still an eye light, but not lighting the dark side of the face. From there, we moved on to close up details and they were very easy to knock out because the lighting setup had already kind of been established. And we just had to move things around a little bit to make the best of what we had. Having the light directly behind the object that he's holding in his hand made things a little bit nicer as well. It created a little bit more of a dynamic shot because that object is center frame so it is the focal point of that shot but also the little glints of the light from coming directly behind kind of drew attention to it even more. Now I wanted to go dramatic for this one but the lighting of a scene really does depend on the scene itself and this is just one way to light a bedroom. But it was really fun. I am thoroughly enjoying doing this series. It's really interesting to try out different lighting styles like lighting the space instead of the subject and seeing where that takes you and I found that invaluable. And it's a real challenge with the lack of lighting gear that I have to do these sort of things. So I'm thinking for future videos I'm going to try and hire some different lights. We can try and do some bigger setups and some different things compared to what I've got here. Anyway thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you next week. I'm not sponsored, but you know, if you wanted to sponsor me, I wouldn't mind.